Hello and welcome back to another episode of Chef Carter's Cooking Corner. Today I'm going to show you a nice recipe to make using leftover mashed potatoes. Now you're going to take a little bit of onion and you're going to chop it up fine. So this was a huge onion so this would be kind of like uh, equal, equal to like I would say two small onions, a medium onion, half a large onion. <laughs> so the recipe is not precise. It's basically to your liking. So So um, from my understanding, potato cakes are an Irish dish. And my mother used to make them all the time. She still does when she has leftover mashed potatoes. Um, she's actually part Irish, which means I'm part Irish as well. And we are actually, not to brag, but we are related to a very famous Irish woman. She was famous in her time, and that's Annie Oakley. So it's kind of cool to know that's one of my ancestors. And, you know, it's kind of cool to think, you know, you, you look back in history and you see history shows or movies based on history, and then there's one of your ancestors. It's kind of cool. It also kind of freaks your friends out if they don't know you very well yet. <laughs> and you're like, oh, Annie Oakley! <laughs> and, um, and then you explain why you got so excited. So, for those of you who do not know who Annie Oakley is, um, she was a sharpshooter back in the 1800s and early 1900s. She traveled around the world with the Wild West show. And um, it's kind of an interesting story how she got started. She uh, was a little girl, I believe. She was about six or seven when her dad passed. And, you know, she wanted to help feed the family so she would go out to hit deer and squirrel well not deer I'm sorry she would go out to hunt rabbits and squirrels probably a couple possums <laughs> some people love possum I know my dad did and um, <laughs> so she would hunt these small animals so she could feed her family and um, so, you know, she became so good at shooting because, you know, back in those days when people would eat food, you know, it was all wild caught. And um, the bad thing about it would be if it was not a head shot, you could break a tooth off hitting buckshot or whatever they used to kill the animals but uh, you could lose a tooth. And so any animal that was killed with a headshot was actually worth more than an animal hit in the body. So Annie Oakley, being a very intelligent young woman, she's like, well, I'm not gonna waste my time and you know, I wanna get as much money as I can per animal. So she taught herself how to shoot. And um, I'm going to go through this one more time. And so word got out. You know, she started selling her meat to local restaurants. And word got out uh, about how good she was. So places as far as Cincinnati, because, you know, she was in Greenville, Ohio, which is... Central West Ohio. It's like on the west border of Ohio next to 
Indiana and a little bit north of center and so Cincinnati is all the way down the southern tip of Ohio so you know her name got out pretty far and wide and so even though she sent a lot of meat to Cincinnati she had never been to Cincinnati I remember reading her biography when I was in third grade and I remember her saying you know how she had never been to Cincinnati and she always heard it called the Queen City so she had always wanted to go to Cincinnati well you know the Bible says your gifts will make room for you and her gift not only sent her to Cincinnati but it sent her halfway around the world she met kings and queens because of her gift and so it's just an amazing story so you know as you could tell I'm kind of proud of that story so this is my gift cooking singing is also a gift I have so hopefully my gifts will make a way for me <laughs> I mean it's supported me so far so anyway let me finish cutting up this all right so I have my uh, peppers and my onions in there I'm going to season these quite well I got um, some salt in there some more pepper all right and now I'm going to add my favorite herb <laughs> or set of herbs and that is uh, Italian seasoning. I don't want to add too much now. I don't want it overpowering. Alright, so let me put these herbs and spices away. Alright, now I'm going to get a big spoon. Well, it's not so a, such a big spoon, but... Alright. So, just going to kind of mix this around a little bit. All right, so before I completely get this mixed up, I want to put two more items in there, and that is an egg and a little bit of flour. All right, so I have an egg here. I'm going to go ahead and put that egg in here first. In case it's bad, you know, it's better to put it in a separate container before I put it in there. Because what if this was bad, and I just bought these eggs, and sometimes, you know, people switch things up. Sometimes the hens lay bad eggs. So if you put it in a little bowl or a cup before you put it in there, you can save your recipe. So let's go ahead and put that in there. All right. And then I'm going to add some flour. I don't know. I think it's going to be a, maybe about... I want to say it's about a quarter cup of flour sprinkled about. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and break that egg up. And you want this to be quite stiff because you're going to form this into patties. And, and so basically take from the outside and push it into the inside. That's the best way to make sure it gets mixed quite well. So this is a bit of a workout. So that's a nice texture right there. So most of my flour is worked in. You know, I kind of went from the bottom to the top. So we know all the potatoes are mixed well 
and that egg and flour will make sure it holds together. All right, so I'm going to take you over to the stove and we're going to cook these potato cakes up. I'm going to go ahead and turn this to medium so we don't want them to fry too fast. And so now I'm going to take a spoonful of my potato mixture and I'm going to pat it out like so. Okay. And once I pat it out, put it in there. So you can make these as big or as small as you like. And yeah, they're going to stick on you a little bit. That's all right. Put them in there. The rest of it can be stored in a covered container or um, a plastic bag. I'm having trouble with that one. There you go. One thing these are good for, they're great side dishes. And that's what we always use them for, side dishes with some chicken or a roast and side vegetables. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little taste here. Nice and crispy on the outside. Mmm. Now those peppers and onions, they add a great texture to the potatoes. So the potatoes are creamy and the vegetables are just a little bit crunchy, but they're not cr really hard crunchy. They're soft, but they're still firm. Yeah, they're looking good on both sides. So that is how you make potato cakes right there. Aren't they pretty? Thank you for stopping by Chef Carter's Cooking Corner. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. Take care.